Oh hey, didn't see you there. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here and this is your first time, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Matthew Van der I'm a Belgian living in Sydney. I'm a talent and I'm from this channel. It's all about talent, and teaching. That's a good one. Today we're talking about the Milky Way and Milky Way season. What is Milky Way season, you ask? Milky Way season is when the conditions are optimal to photograph the galactic core of our Milky Way. Planet Earth is located in one of the arms of a barred spiral galaxy. Think of it as a flat spiral. We are in one of the outer arms. Star density is, of course, bigger in the center of our galaxy than on the outside, which is why photographers prefer to shoot this thing that we call the galactic core because visually it looks way better on photos than the outer arms or the opposite side of the galactic core which is it's still interesting it's just not as interesting now because of earth's journey around the sun some times of year are better to shoot this galactic core than others if you're in the northern hemisphere the best time of year for viewing is from march till october with the prime time because of longer nights from late April till late July. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, like myself here in Sydney, Australia, or as some like to call it, uh, down under, that was terrible, I'll never say that again, the prime viewing times are from February till October with the best time of year, the actual peak period, as you might call it, between June and July. When you're planning a galactic core or Milky Way or Astro, whatever you call it, photo shoot, make sure to keep the lunar cycle in mind. The moon, obviously, as you would know, I presume, goes through phases and the phase you want is called the new moon phase, meaning the moon is new. It's the opposite of a full moon. A full moon is so damn bright that you don't even need that long of an exposure to make your photo look like you shot it during the daytime. Now all this light might look cool in your photos, but it also drowns out all the starlight in the shot, or the majority of it anyway, so you will get the coolest galaxy shots if there's no moon around. Now that we've got all the boring theoretical stuff out of the way, let's talk about practical things. How do you actually find the galactic core? How do you shoot it? Where do you point your camera? How do you know where to point your camera? Obviously there's an app for that. Uh, the app I use is called PhotoPills. I prefer that app because I really like the team of people that developed it. There are other alternative options. There's cheaper or even free options. Um, I'll list some of those in the blog on matchos.com slash blog. You'll find an article about this video and uh, more in-depth explanations. But I will be talking about PhotoPills because yeah, I just, I really like the app. I'm not gonna list everything it does here because I'll run out of time, but let's talk about the stuff that's relevant for Milky Way photos. Open the app, hit planner and scroll to visibility galactic core. Tap the timing at the bottom to change the time or day. I pretty much look at this as a virtual location scan. You can also enable AR or augmented reality for the location that you are currently at. You can actually look around and see where it will be. Now that you understand how to use this app, let's get down to what you need to shoot the galactic core. Obviously you need a very dark sky. Depending on where you live, you can drive one or maybe up to three hours out of a major city to to get yourself out of the light pollution bubble as I like to call it. You want to get as far away as you can from light pollution because it will also drown out the starlight just like a moon, a full moon or half moon even will do. You really want to get as far away as possible and get into a dark sky location. I'd say it's a pretty unique experience to see the night sky as our ancestors used to see it because we as modern day humans have no idea what the night sky looks like. You also obviously need the right time of year. Now I'm recording this on the 4th of March, 2018 and the right time of year is right now. So get out and get shooting. Another thing you need obviously to shoot is a camera. Now, pretty much any entry level camera these days will work for your astro shot. What is most important or the most important quality of the camera is the low light capabilities. Now, obviously the more expensive your camera, the better. But as I mentioned, I shot um, Milky Way stuff on my 600D, which was an entry level camera years and years ago. Something else that really helps is having a fast lens. Now a fast lens or fast glass refer glass glass refers to fast shutter speeds and the way you get these fast shutter speeds is by having a large hole in your lens. A lens is like a tunnel or a barrel through which light goes through. The bigger the hole, the more light goes through, the shorter your shutter speeds. Does that make sense? So an f1.4 lens which has a bigger hole than an f4 lens is better to shoot Astro. My first Astro lens was the Takina 11-16 f2.8 lens which you can grab for I think a couple hundred euros or dollars or wherever you are 
online, possibly even secondhand, and slap that lens on pretty much any camera and you'll be able to shoot some nice Milky Way shots. If you're like me, you're gonna wanna try shoot time lapses during your astro missions, so it's good to have a trigger. Even though a lot of cameras have an intervalometer built into the camera firmware these days, I still prefer an actual manual external remote. Because we're gonna shoot long exposures, you're gonna wanna put your camera on something sturdy, like for example, a photo tripod or a video tripod, doesn't really matter. As long as it's sturdy enough to keep the camera absolutely still during the exposure time of your photo. I don't wanna make this video too long, so I'll make a separate video on how to specifically shoot the Galaxy, but here are the basics. Find a dark spot with ideally an interesting foreground. Use PhotoPills or any other app to scout your location beforehand and figure out where the galactic core is gonna be. Put your camera on a tripod, enable manual focus zoom in during live view and focus manually on one of the brighter stars that you can see in the sky you're gonna want to shoot raw photos and you're gonna want to have a trigger delay or use an external remote to trigger the photo to minimize shake in your camera any shake that happens during the exposure obviously will make your camera sorry your photo blurry if you want to shoot time lapse instead of a single photo just make sure that you leave a big enough buffer or a gap between photos so if you've got a 20 second exposure shoot with a 25 second interval when you're done shooting you open your raw photo in an app like photoshop or lightroom and edit it however you like i might do a separate video on that because again i want to keep this more about the milky way season and how to prep and get ready for it and that's pretty much it if you plan on using this knowledge to shoot the Milky Way this year, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to support the channel, check out patreon.com slash mattjoes, where you can find a time-lapse cheat sheet with a ton of my time-lapse knowledge. And yeah, you can just help me make more videos, pretty much. The fully written version of this video is on my blog, mattjoes.com slash blog. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you in the comments and hopefully on the next video as well. My name is at mattjoes. Well, my name is Matthew Van der Pizzo, but my username is at mattjoes. And I will hopefully see you some other day on some other video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Talking about the Milky Way season with my hair looking all strange. How, how's it going? If the earth is round, then why are cars shaped like these? And yeah, not like these. Gotta get the beard right, am I right? Ha. Mm. Bigger in the center of this spiral. Because the because the star density is obviously built spiral, it looks cooler than the outside. Mm. Because of Earth, mm. better some times of year. Does that make sense? Some times of year are better. English are better to what what to what to what to watch to look at to witness the galactic core from march to october if you're in late april late july march october april july late march to late april that was so wrong <laughs> in australia that's horrible a mm, mm, augmented reality to um what did i write uh, galaxy shots does that even make sense fuck me come on man you oh, get hyped fam it's ready it's ready, get ready, we're ready, the sky is ready, the angle and location of planet Earth versus the sun is ready to give you some banger shots. Slap that on your entry level camera and before you know it, you're at, you're at shooting bangers. You're at shooting snipers. You're, sh you're sniping heaters at night. Nighttime snipers. Nighttime heaters? Night nighttime bangers. Astro bangers. Bangers and mesh. Got him. All right, and now we carefully place this in the back of the shot and maybe people will notice. Maybe not, probably not, let's be honest.